awesome worship. God bless you, worship them. We appreciate you. Thank God, thank God for your life. Thank God for our media. The Lord bless you richly. Thank God for the good work that you are doing. Our God reign in majesty, he reigns all the time. His reign, his reign is forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us again this afternoon for the God of Breakthrough meeting. Kindly spread the news by inviting your friends, your family, your colleagues to join us on this platform for the word of God. And I know that as they join, they will be richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Let's just for two minutes share again this afternoon or this morning. Let's share, let's share, go ahead and share. Let's share the good news, go ahead and share. I want you to go ahead and share. I want you to go ahead and share. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead and share again this morning. Share this platform with somebody. Ask them to be part of this program. And as they are joining, I believe the Lord is going to bless them richly and also inform them to always switch on their notification. And as they do, the Lord will richly bless them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A big thank you to every one of you that shares this program and always join us anytime we are on. We appreciate you and we say God bless you real good. Reminder again for our women conference, in case you have not registered, please, please register your interest. Get the link and make sure you register. And if you haven't got the link to register, please, as we are online now, kindly, uh, kindly send a message so that we know you and we can reach out to you. The Lord bless you. Either you are paid or you have not paid, we want you to still register because that's going to help you. It's of your own benefit as you register. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Daddy, have your way again today. Let your people be blessed as they come together, wherever they are, and we come together as one body. Let us be blessed through your word that is coming out this day. Lord, minister to all our needs and let grace be released that the God of breakthrough will work for us, will move on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, the title of my message is Four Friends. Hallelujah. I said the title of my message is for friends. Praise the Lord. If I may ask you this morning, do you have friends? That's the first question. If they ask you, who is your friend? Who will you mention that is your friend? What makes you to say that person is your friend? Do you have similarity? Do you have similar character? What is it in that person that you see that makes you call that person your friend? And again, the second question I'm going to be asking is what are friends for? I'm going to ask that, what are friends for? The first one is, who is your friend? The second one is, what are friends for? I believe that uh, for me, if I ask, if you ask me that question, that what are friends for? I'm going to say this, your friends are people who root for you no matter what happened, they are standing with you. There is nothing that can call them to not call you friends in your time of difficulty. I want to go back again. What are friends for? Friends are people who root for you. No matter what you go through, they are standing with you into the root. They are not ready to move. They are not ready to shake. What are friends for? You find out as your friends, in your deepest and darkest time, your friends will do what? They will stand with you. They will back you up. <laughs> and listen, when you even share secrets with them, what did I say? When you share secrets with them, instead of them heading to the door, they will stick around you. They are bound with you. They will bond with you. And they will grow stronger and stronger in your time of need. So when we are talking about friends, we all need friends in our life. But who is your friend? Your friend, you know who your friend is when you are going through your difficult times in life. I don't know, maybe you have been through a difficult time in life and you have friends. 
You see, at times when people are going through difficult times in life, there are some people that are very close to you. They ignore you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. They just leave you because you are going through your challenges. I remember a great man, you know, you know, um, his best friend. And he said this, he said, I know my best friend in the time of difficulty. I know my best friend in the time when I face, I face these challenges of life. And this is what happened to this great man. He was caught in the scene of adultery and everybody was talking, media was talking, everywhere, everybody was talking. Do you know some people at the time, at, at his darkest time, at the time that he needed people that will show up, some people were able to identify with him in what he was going through at that time. Some people even said, I don't know you. It's not my friend. They just come, you know, we just talk, but we don't have that relationship with each other. I'm, I'm talking about four friends this morning. Praise the Lord, somebody. So every one of us, we need friends in life. But who are your friends? Are your friends the kind of people that you can talk about mad things? Are your friends the kind of people that you can help him talk about your heart feelings? Are your friends are the kind of people that you can be naked and not ashamed before them because you are able to open up everything that is in your life? This is a question that you need to meditate on this morning. Who are my friends? Are my friends kind of people that when you are in trouble, that is the time they turn their back at you? Are your friend kind of people when you are in need, they stand strong? And they make sure that you do not fall. Are your friends the kind of people when you have you have problem, they walk out of you. They even help you to you know to enlarge and make sure that it escalates to even the extent that you don't even expect. What are friends for? Who are your friends? These are the things that we need to ponder on because at times we think that we have friends, but we don't have friends. There's nothing bad in you having friends, but your friend. Can they stand with you in your darkest moment? Can your friends show up in your darkest moment? When they come in your darkest moment, is it there? Are they there to mock you? Are they there to scorn you? Are they there to say to you, uh, you can count on us? Are they there to give you the strength and the support that you need as an individual? Are they there to be with you and put their hands around you and reassure you again and again that listen, all is going to be well. We are standing with you. We are praying with you. We are here for you. Anything that it takes, we are ready to make that supply to make sure that things go on well. This is the point which every one of us have to think about this morning. Who are your friends and what are friends for? I want you to think about it. Do you have friends or you have acquaintance? Because it's two different things. When you have a friend, they will not turn your back. They will not turn their back at you. When you have a friend, they will stick with you. When you have a friend, they will be the one to guide and to direct you. When you have a friend, they will be the one to lead you. When you have a friend, they will be there to give you support. When you have a friend, you know, they will whisper words of encouragement and assurance to you every time. And they will help you to be stable, even in your difficult time. Do you know when you have friends, when your backs are towards the wall, those are the people that will be your pillar at the time. And they will make sure that you are not discouraged. They will make sure that you are lifted. They will make sure that they hold your hand up in order for you to come out of every discouragement. What are friends for? It's a question you need to ask yourself. It's a question I need to ask myself. And you know, it's only in difficult time. You see, there are friends that the reason why they come into your life there is something that they can take, take from you. There is something you have. And because they are benefiting from what you have, they will keep coming and coming and coming and coming. They are friends. They are not benefiting from you. There is nothing you can give them, but they are just there to support you. If I may ask this morning, who are your friends? Who do you call your friends? Who are the people that you have surrounded yourself with? Remember I said, there are people that because they are eating from you, because they are getting from you, because there is something in your hand. That's the reason why they are coming. If that thing is taken away, they won't show up again in your life. In your difficult time, 
you won't see them to strengthen you. In your difficult time, when they come in, they have only come to mock you. They have only come to compound that, yes, what they said is true. So they are happy and they are jubilating. So they are so happy. What are friends for and who are your friends? It's a question that we need to sit at every point in, of our life, every point in time of our life. We need to sit down. We need to ask this question again and again. Who is my friend? Who is your friend? You need to ask yourself. I need to ask myself. Because up to a time, we have a bunch of people that surrounds us. We have a bunch of people that we think that we are friends. And we go together. And let me say this. The fact that you wear the same clothes with somebody does not make that person your friend. Do you know that? The fact that <laughs> you are eating with somebody in the same plate does not make that person your friend. The, time, the fact that you always spend time to gist with somebody does not make that person your friend. And your friend is identified in your time of trouble. What did I say? You can identify who your friends are in the time of trouble because they will not leave you. Even when you are saying to them, I don't want you, I want to be alone. They will say, yes, we want to be with you. We cannot leave you. We want to be part of what is happening. They will hold on to the ends of your garment. They will pat you at the back. They will be that pillar that will support you. They will be that pillar that we, they will say to you, you cannot fall as long as we are here. They will beat their chest for your sake and say, listen, right up, we are with you. You cannot be depressed. You cannot be discouraged. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Who are the people that you have signed in or sign up and say, these are my friends. Who are these people that you call every time and you say friends? They may not be your friends. They may be your adversaries. They may be the people that will push you to do certain things and you finish doing it and you ask yourself, why did I do that? Because your friends, people that you call friends that are not acquaintances in your life, do you know what they are? They push you, they encourage you, they help you get there. But listen, up to the time, we misuse that word as friend, we call people friend, but they are not really friend. If we sit down and we ask, who is my friend? Remember I said, you feel safe with your friend because you can talk about mad things. They are not going to report it. You are not going to hear it anyway. They hold it, they defend you even at your back. You may, be, you may, have, uh, you may be, have a hot feeling about certain things. They will also stand with you. The one will see you through and push you through to the other side. It's my prayer again that in your difficult time, may God raise people for you in the name of Jesus. Now let's go to the scripture that led me to this. As I sat down and I began, as I sat down and I began to meditate on this scripture, this scripture led me to asking my friend, my asking myself, who are my friends? Who can I call friends? You know, at times some people, they'll just, you know, they, they'll come. And they want to, you know, they want to be with you. They just want to help you. They want to help, help, help your hands to be up and not to be down. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Luke 5, 18 to 25. As I will be reading, and I want you to jot some things down. Hallelujah. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way, to bring him in because of the crowd. They went up on the roof and let him down with his bed, threw the ties into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisee began to question saying, who is this who speak blasphemy, who can forgive sin but God? alone. When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, why do you question in your heart, which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he arose, he arose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home, glorifying God. He went home, glorifying God. 
Hallelujah. Jesus was the one here. He was teaching in, in someone's house. Hallelujah. It was in someone's house. The person's name was not mentioned. And the place was crowded. The place was filled with a lot of people. And these friends, you know, they have, they have a friend also. Four of them have a friend. And this man was paralyzed. And this man has a muscular condition. He couldn't stand up. He couldn't get up. He couldn't do anything for himself. I sat down and I was meditating on this scripture. And I want to believe that these friends, though it's not recorded, but as I was meditating, these friends must have been looking for ways and means to help this man. Maybe they try the doctors. Maybe they try other things. Maybe they try other medication that they have as at that time in order to help this man. But they are so much interested in the case of their friend. They want their friends to be able to get up as well, to walk the way they are walking. So they are ready to do anything for this friend. That's friend we are talking about. Remember, I said, if you have a friend, you will be able to do anything for that friend. You'll be able to stand by that friend. You'll be able to help that friend. And the scripture said, when they were looking for ways to bring this man in, because there was a lot of crowd and they could not come in or get to where Jesus was. I believe they quickly have a meeting and say, this is what we are going to do because they have faith and they believe that if this man will get to the presence of Jesus or if this man will touch or if Jesus will touch this man, that something will happen. There will be a change. Hear me and hear me again this afternoon. Your friend, they are more interested in your changes. They don't want you to be in the same position. They don't want you to be crippled. Hear me and hear me very well. Your friends are not the people that tells you lies. Your friends are the people that can look straight in your eyes and tell you when you are wrong. Your friends are the kind of people that can say to you, oh, you don't do that, and you listen to them. Do you have friends in your life that are encouragers? Do you have friends that are in your life and they are encouragers? Friends that can stand with you. Friends that can hold your hand. Friends that can reassure you that everything is going to be all right. Do you have that kind of friends in your life? This is exactly what happened to this man. He had friends in his life that they were able to stay with him. They were able to stick with him despite his disability. They didn't look down on him that he's disabled and say, sorry, boy, we'll not be able to take you to where we are going. We are going to a crusade and you will not be able to come with us because you know you have a muscular condition and you will not be able to walk. And they were ready to walk things out to make sure that this friend also get to the position where he can stand on his feet and he can also walk with them. Remember I said, I want to believe. I wasn't there, but I was just meditating and these thoughts were coming into my heart. I want to believe that this same man, while they were meditating, the friend suggested and said, you know what? The only way we can get this our friend to meet Jesus is to remove the roof. Hear me and hear me very well. Who are those people in your life that they are ready to sacrifice at any cost, anything at all? They are ready to pay the price. Do you have anybody in your life that is a friend that can pay the price for you? In the case when you are in, in a sudden need and they can come in and say, we are here to help. And truly they are helping. Not that they are collecting information in order to do more damage into your life. They are there and they are pushing. They are there and they are supporting. And they are there and they are so optimistic about everything that is happening in your life. And they are holding your hands on. And they are saying to you, you cannot fall. You cannot fall. You cannot fall. You cannot be in that situation. You cannot be. This cannot go on continuously. This is going to change. Do you have anybody like that in your life? They were ready to pay the price. What did I say? They were ready to pay the price. You know the reason why some people die? They die because they don't have anybody. Remember the man that was at the pool of bedside that said the same thing. He said, I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. It's my prayer today, as you listen to the sound of my voice, that God will begin to give you people in your life. People that will be there for you. People that will stand with you. People that will be encouraged. People that will be sons and daughters of consolation. The, um, Paul was able to say that Barnabas is a son of consolation. It's my prayer that God will give you sons and daughters of consolation, that they will console you, they will encourage you. God will bring friends your way 
that they will stand by you. God will bring some uh, friends your way that will even help you to appreciate what you have as an individual. Do you know there are friends when they come into your life, you have not discovered your gifting. When these people come into your life, they help you to discover your gifting. They are able to point out, to say you are very good at this. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Do you know there are friends like that in your life? That they stand in your support and they help you to discover your gifting. Not only that they discover your gifting, they help you to, uh, to also make sure you develop it. Not only that you develop it and you are useful to yourself and you are useful to the kingdom of God and you are useful to, the, to your generation. Those are friends. Those are friends. Friends are not people that talk behind you. They are not. If you have anybody in your life and all they do is to talk behind you, they are not your friends. And this you need to know. They are not your friends. If you have people in your life when you are trying to climb and they are waiting and watching and saying, we will see how we are going to climb. If you hear it one time, they are not your friends. They are not your friends. They are not people that you need to permit into your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But friends are there. They are ready to remove the roof. They don't mind how much it's going to cost them. They don't mind how much they are going to pay. They don't mind who is going to look at them straight in the eyes and rebook them and say, you are supporting that person. They don't mind who is going to say to them that, oh, in this time that you need to say that you don't know this person, disown this person, you are standing with them. And this is why I said earlier on, I said a great man, a great man in his darkest hour, people were running from him. People didn't want to talk to him. People don't want to be part of his life. But there are certain people that was able to hold his hand. There are certain people that came out publicly and said, this person is my friend. And he said, that, that really, that, he said, it's like, a, uh, it, it's like the fire is burning. And somebody was able to pour water on the fire. He said at the time, there are certain people were coming out and they were declaring that this person is my friend. Even in his darkest moment, this person is my friend. Even in the time of his pain, he said that encourages him. He said that's one of the things that he will just remember in the middle of the night. And he will sit up and he will say, wow, I have people that can still put their hands and say, you are my friend. And that was a great encouragement for him. Praise the Lord. And what did what happened? After they removed the roof, after they removed the roof, as I'm joining you as well, this afternoon to remove every roof that is limiting you, every roof that enemy has placed over you, friends have placed over you, and have, co have caused you not to rise beyond certain limit. This afternoon, as I'm joining my faith with you, such roof is removed in the name of Jesus. I say such roof is removed in the name of Jesus over your career, whatever it is in your marriage. I say such roof is removed by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They pull down the ties of the roof and they lay down their friends right there. Imagine you are just sitting in your room and you find out that something is just coming from the roof. I believe some of you will run away. I believe some of you will not want to stand up. But listen, Jesus saw it. He said he saw their faith. Hear this. It wasn't the man's faith alone. Uh, sorry, it wasn't the four friends' faith alone that Jesus saw. He also saw the friends that they were cunning. He saw the faith of every one of them. And when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. Man, your sins are forgiven. When he saw their faith, you see, we are connected it again to faith. Faith is the key thing that you need. It's the currency that we need in the kingdom of God. It's the currency that you need to be able to buy anything that you need in the kingdom of God. It's the currency that we open the door. It's the currency that we shut the door. It's the currency when the devil is trying to hold you back from receiving from God, when you are trapped, something is trying to stop you from rising to your hand, the all you need is what is faith. All you need is what is faith. When Jesus saw their faith, 
He said, my God, this man, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And hear this. When Jesus said to the sick man, he didn't lay his hands on the sick man. All Jesus did was stand up. Stand up. So he didn't lay hands. He spoke the word. 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 And the man was on the receiving side. The man received the word. He received the word. He received the word. He received the word. And he did exactly as he was told. He stood up. The man will have given excuses by saying, you know what? You know, I've been on this uh, bed for how many years? The man will have said that he has been bedridden for many years, for many days, for many months, but he obeyed instruction. And that shows that the man had faith. It shows that the man does what? That the man has faith. It shows that he has faith. It shows that he has faith. Praise the Lord, somebody. The friends, we are not thinking, who is going to pay the bill? Who is going to pay the bill? Who is not going to pay the bill? I've seen people have had a story of people that died because there was nobody to pay their bill. They wouldn't have died. They would have lived long, but there was nobody to be there for them. There was nobody at the darkest time of their life when they needed somebody to help them out. And some of the bills that you hear at times, they are so ridiculous. Some of them may be some, you know, in part of Africa, it may be about 50 pounds, it may be about 100 pounds, it may be about 200 pounds. And because there was nobody to start for them, there was no friend, you find out that just like that, they'll die. That will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. This afternoon, what the Lord is going to do for you, God is going to send friends into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So these friends, we are not thinking about repairs. They were not thinking about the damage. They were ready to say whatever that is going to cost us. We must try as much as possible to see to it that our friend is able to walk. Our friend is able to move. Who do you call your friends? Again, let me ask you, who do you call your friends? Who do you call your friends? Are your friends just people that you just gist? Remember, there is a sermon I preached one time. Some of you will remember that sermon. I said there are friends that has to be at the outer court. You don't bring them into the inner court. Because there are friends that when they see you, when they come to your home, they look for ways to destroy it. There are friends that when you share certain information with them, they look for things to make sure that they bring you down. Do you know there are friends in your life that information that you give to them, you have sold yourself out. Because that same information, because they are not happy with you, they may go with you, they may do whatever with you. That same information, they want to use it to destroy you. That same information that you told them in good faith, in good faith, that same information that is just like a gist when you are talking, you don't really mean it to be any harm. They will use it against you. They can use it against you in the court of law. They hold on to it because all they are looking for is your downfall. Do you know that even in marriage, you need a friend. <laughs> you need a friend as husband. You need a friend as wife. It's so important. Can I also say this? As children, children that you have, you need your children to be your friend. This is so important. This is so important because there are certain things. You know when the going is good, when everything is right uh, with you and your friend that you just hear as information because you feel that, oh, it's my friend. I can't hide it from that friend. Let me tell that friend. I've seen cases where things that people, uh, you know, shared in good faith, in good faith, because they feel that this person is my friend. They feel that this person, how will I be hiding information from this person? Let me just tell this person. Let me leave it in the hands of this person. That same information that you didn't mean any harm. The person was able to collect those information, use it as evidence against you. And you begin to ask yourself, what is this? What is this? And you are saying, but I didn't mean it. But I didn't do it. And the friend is saying, crucify him. Crucify her. Crucify him. Crucify her. Who are your friends? Who do you call friends? Remember what I'm still on. The four friends. The four friends. These men stood with this man that has paralysis. 
They make sure that they are there with him. They make sure they are saying, you are not going down. You are going to come up with us today. Today is that day of your deliverance. Today is that day of your killing. I'm speaking from the book of Luke 5, 18 to 25. They are saying, we are standing with you. They are saying, you know what? If you are down, we also are down. They did not allow the burden of that one friend. You know, they didn't get allow the burden of that one friend to get to them. They were all looking. They were, you know, united. They have the same mind that even Jesus saw their face. That is not mouth they are calling friends. Who are the people that call you friends, but it's mouth? They are friends that you are called, that you call your friends, but it's just mouth. You just call them because you feel that, well, it's my friend. Maybe attachment, attache. You just call it because maybe they have money. Maybe there are some things they have. And the moment they don't have those things again, then you are no longer their friends. Maybe you call them friends because there is something you want to take from them. The real friends, they don't want to take anything from you. And that is the truth. They don't need anything from you. So they don't need you to be rich before they befriend you. They don't need you to be an elite before they befriend you. They don't need you to have something before they befriend you. The real friends will not even be able to point out to say, this is the reason why I love this person. No, but they hold on to you. They hold on to you every time they want to be around you. The real friends will always look for your success. They look for ways for you to succeed. They look for ways for you to, you know, to get up on your feet. You see, real friends, they will tell you the secret of wealth. What did I say? The real friends in life, they will tell you the secret of, of wealth. They'll have nothing to cover. Real friends are straightforward. Remember I said, friends that are encouragers will tell you to your face and say, you did this wrong, don't do it again. You may be upset with them, but you will find out that this friend, anytime I'm with them, they always tell me the truth. Do you need such people in your life? You will know that these friends, anytime I go to this person, if I need to hear the truth, I remember many years, somebody will say to me that if I need to hear the truth, I come to you and I will be laughing. I said, why would you say that? I said, because I know you will say it the way it is. If you need to hear the truth, do you have friends that you go to? Do you have friends you can sit down with and they'll be able to tell you the truth without hiding anything? And you know, your friends are meant to be mirrors in your life. Am I talking to somebody? Our friends are meant to be our mirror. The Bible, uh, the Shakespeare says, the eye sees not itself except by reflection. Do you know that your friends should be able to show you that mirror? He said, I am your mirror. That's what Shakespeare says. The eye sees not itself except by reflection. Then he went on to say, I am your mirror. Your friends should be your mirror that will be able to show you your fault. And they show you your fault, not to crucify you, but in order to just say, oh, well, let's work on this. Let's do this together. Let's do that together. That's who your friends is. Do you have a friend? Do you have people that you call your friends? Go through the test of time and see if your friends are standing. Go through the test of time and see if your friends will hold your hand. Go through the test of time and see if your friends will sing of your praise. Go through the test of time and see if your strength and your friend will be your spiritual backup. It may, they may not be able to offer money, but they will be in the place of prayer for you 24-7. And all they will be doing is to pray for your healing, for your deliverance, for your restoration. These are who friends are in our life. Shout hallelujah. This sick patient, you know, when Jesus said, get up and walk. You see, the, the, the patient... You see, the kind of friend that surrounds this man, I don't know what was the culture of the day, but do you know of that time? That's what I'm saying. Do you know the friends can say, why don't you take benefit? Just go and take benefit. Just be on benefit. you still be eating. Things will still go fine. You know, you just be in the record of the, of the uh, you know, maybe of, this, um, of, the, of the government. And they'll pump money and give you money. We have friends like that. Such friends want you to be like them. Such friends don't want you to get up on your feet. Such friends does not want you to rise above them. Do you know there are friends in life that they don't want you to rise above them? There are friends that they are not happy about your happiness. There are friends that they don't, they want you to die. They want you dead. They want you to die, but they won't tell you. Such friends can even come to your house. Such friends can even eat in the same place with you. 
Such friends, every time, 24 7, you're on phone with them. But when you move away from them, they are, when you tell them your problem, they are so happy. They will say, it, Yes, you are getting it because they want to move you out of where God has placed you. This is where wisdom comes in. Hallelujah. I said, This is where wisdom comes in. Who are your friends? Who are your friends? I want you to ask yourself before we go into prayer who are my friends? Who are my friends? Who are the people in your life right now? Maybe they are messing up your life. Maybe they are messing up your destiny. And your ears are closed because you couldn't see what they are doing in your life. Maybe they are pushing you towards the place and direction of destruction because they are friends as well that will push you towards the way of direct uh, destruction. They will keep saying it to you. Do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. And they push you and push you. Do you know? That there are certain friends in your life, when they push you to a certain level, they turn their back at you. Then they begin to give excuses. Oh, well, I will have called you. You see this, my son, my husband, my work. I don't have that trouble. But why they were, I don't have that time. But why they were pushing you, they have the time. They have the time to direct you. They have the time to begin to guide you. They have the time to instruct you. But in the moment of trouble, they do what? They turn their back. In the moment of trouble, they leave you alone to carry your cross. But the four friends in the book of Luke 18 to 25, the four friends, they stood by this man. They stood by this man. They were in pain with him as well. They were going through what he was going through with him. They stood with him and said, we will not let you go down. We will not allow you to be down forever. We're going to pick you up and we're going to make sure that things turn around for you. I pray for you again this afternoon or this morning that the grace of God will send people your life that will hold your hands and will lead you into righteousness of God. And it's my prayer as well that if anyone has come into your life to kill, to steal, to destroy, may the Lord open your ears and your heart so that you'll be able to hear this and you'll be able to change and you'll be able to take instruction as you are hearing the word of God. Listen, the word of God that you hear, don't just hear it. Go and sit down and meditate on the word of God. As I sat down and I was meditating on this word, there is a lot of things that comes to my mind. And some of the things that come to mind is what I have shared with you again today. Who are your friends? It's a question you need to ask. And what are friends called? It's a question you need to ask. It's a question you need to answer. You need to send this to your, to, your, to your loved one so that they can hear it and digest it. Who are your friends? Who are your friends? And the scripture says, Jesus saw their faith so amazing that, wow, we have friends that can go extra mile. Do you have people that can go extra mile for your sake? Do you have friends that can go extra mile for your sake? Do you have friends that can be there for you? Do you have friends that we stay through with you? Do you have friends that give you up into the hands of the enemy? Do you know up to the time, I had a story of three young girls. I don't know, it was in the newspaper sometimes, sometimes ago. And these three young girls, they went out together and they were taking one of them, you know, for rituals. And she didn't know. They were in the same car and they, they went together. And when they get to the place of ritual, they took the money. And they, they already told the cabman that took them there. They said, this is the time we will finish. We want you to come back and pick us up. And the cabman agreed. You know, the cabman would be happy because for him, that's money. So he, he said, okay, I'll come back. I can even wait for you. No problem. And do you know what happened? When they get to the place where they want to use this girl as ritual, they collected the money and they sold their friend. But when it was time for them to go, to go back, the cabman came back and he found out that something was strange about them. They were holding a bag that was not with them when they went. And he said, he didn't say anything. He asked them, where is the third word? And they said to him, oh, well, he decided to stay. Everything is fine. You see, when God wants to fight for you, you won't know how God will fight. There's way that God fights our battle. And this is why. Hang around good people. Hang around people that will guide you. 
Hang around people that will take you into the holiest of holies. Hang around people that will help you to stand on your feet. Don't hang on around people that want to tell you what your ears want to hear. You see, the problem with a lot of people is this. You allow people that hang around you. They are just telling you, you are the best. You are beautiful. I say you are beautiful. That's what they are singing to you. But they are not telling you that, listen, this thing, this thing is this way. They are not there to tell you the truth. Don't hang around the people that always hail you. Don't hang around the people that all they can see in you is good. Hang around people that will be able to say, yes, you are good. And at the same time, they say, but let's work on this. But if you have a friend and they can't challenge you, they are not your friends. If you have a friend, they can't correct you, they are not friends. If you have a friend that anything you do, ah, you do it and they say it's right. You don't have friends. So look for friends. Pray. That's the prayer we are going to pray. <laughs> That's the prayer we are going to pray today. So the cabman said to them, where's the third person? They said, no problem. She's fine. <laughs> and they were saying everything. But the man suspected that something was not right in their voice. He suspected that something was not, was not, was not okay. So what this man did was the cabman drove them to the police station. And, and you know, they asked him, where are we going? So no, I quickly want to do something at the police station. I quickly, so they never suspected. They never suspected that he was going to hand them over to the police. They never suspected. So when he got to the police, he went in and speak to the police and they have to take these two girls. And when they find out what was in the bag, it was money. They have already sold. They sold that one. They sold that one. Hear this again before we go and pray. There are friends that will sell you behind. What did I say? There are friends that will sell you behind. They sell you for chicken change. They sell you for any amount. There are friends that don't even want to take money. They don't want to take money. They just want you because they don't want your progress. They don't want to take any money. They just want to sell you. As long as you are out of their way, they are happy. As long as you are no more there, yes, they say, praise the Lord. Listen to me. Listen to me. You don't rejoice at evil. No. These friends stood with their friends and they make sure that they were able to get him back on his feet. That's the friend. That's the friend. They went extra mile. They paid the cost in the time of difficulty. I want you to start meditating on what I'm saying. Remember this morning I was talking about meditation. Start talking. You see, there are some, start meditating. You know, there are some people, when they see that you want to rise, they do everything to sit on your rising. So if you have them as friends, they will sit on it. They will say, as long as we are alive, it's not going to happen. As long as we are here, and they will, they have seen battles in life. I've seen things. I've seen things. In my 33 years of ministry, I've seen things in life. At times I sit back and I think, and I said, are people real? Are people real? There's nothing that makes me to talk the way I'm talking, but I meditated on that word, and I'm saying, God, help me. Give me friends. You need friends that will be transparent before. They, they will know your weaknesses, but they are ready to work with you. You need such friends. You need friends that behind you, they will defend you. I have people like that. They will defend you. Even if you have gone wrong, but they are still standing with you. If you have gone wrong, they are still patting you at the back. If you have gone wrong, they are holding your hand. Listen to me. They can come and book you in your face, but in your back, they will be fighting. May God give you people like that. In your face, they will rebook you and say, mm, what you have done is not good. But they will go back in your <laughs> behind you. I have people like that. And all they will do, they will fight your cause. By the time you will hear, you'll be surprised that, ah, this person is rebooking me right in my front. I'll come in my back. Those are the kind of people you need. Not people that will come to your back and uh, to your front and say, do it more. Do more, do more. And they will go to your back and say, we don't know what is happening. We don't know how, what is happening to her. Well, what can we do? We can't do anything. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord give you friends that will help you in the journey of life. 
I want to believe that these messages, you are taking them in. I want to believe that these messages, you are not just allowing them to come in. You are taking time to digest it. I want to believe that you are not just coming on this platform, but you are going back to sit down and replay this. I want to believe that you are not taking this message just for granted. I want to believe that you are not seeing these messages as, ah, well, another message of friends. I want to believe that's not it. But I want to believe that it helps you to rethink the kind of people that you will surround yourself with. It can, it causes you to sit down and say, mm, maybe something, God help me. Maybe this message is for me. You see, anytime you hear messages and you are thinking, oh, this message is for A, means you don't hear the message. Because if you hear it, you will care more about yourself. But that's what to bring transformation into your life before you be thinking about others. It's my prayer that as we will ask again for friends. I don't know, maybe you need four friends like the man. I don't know, maybe it's one that you need. I don't know. For me, I can't handle too many friends. I cannot handle too many friends because you see, friendship is so costly. What did I say? Friendship is so costly. What I say, I say friendship is so costly. There are friends that, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Let's go for it. There are friends that when you buy shoe, they will query you. And you buy the shoe, you didn't buy man. You will tell them, it sales. And I, they don't, why don't you ask of my side? There are friends that when you, they see you dress, they are just upset. So there are certain things you have, you can't use because of those friends. Am I really talking? I've been around for some time, so I understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking as, I'm not talking, maybe I read something from book. I'm talking from the spirit. And this will fill you as food. Yeah, friendship are so costly. Don't you know? Every time they will ask you, why didn't you buy this for me? Why didn't you buy this for me? Even when your husband has sex, they have to go and ask their own husband, they must have sex. When you change your hair, they are changing their hair. Whatever you are doing, they want to do it. It's so costly. It's so costly. When you change your makeup, they say, ah, why did you buy that makeup you didn't buy for me? You bought that lipstick you didn't buy for me. Friends, friendship is so costly. Praise the Lord. This morning, let's look at Matthew 7, 7. Then we go and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise because you bruised the head of the enemy again. Glory be to God. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. This afternoon you want to ask. You want to ask for friends. What did I say? You want to ask for God to give you friends. Friends like a, friends like Jonathan and David. That's for another day, not for today. Friends like what? Jonathan and David. Jonathan was not moved about the throne coming to, coming to David. He entered covenant relationship with him. He said, I know that that throne that my father is sitting is for you. Those are friends. It, there's nothing to struggle about. It's no win-win. If he wins, no problem. As long as the throne comes to somebody that will be able to manage it. You see the problem with a lot of believers today. We want some people to fall. We want some things to happen in their life and you can't take their position. <laughs> you can't take their position. Why don't you be there and befriend it and hold up to push them to get into that eye? Hallelujah. Today we are asking, Oh, hallelujah. Anywhere you are, just begin to exalt the name of the Lord. I see the Lord again this morning. I see the Lord again in another dimension. I see the Lord again. I see the Lord again. I want you to worship God. I want you to exalt God. I want you to exalt God. I want you to exalt God. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Let's give him praise again. Let's worship him, the beauty of his holiness. Let's adore him. Let's exalt him. Let's glorify him. Let's talk of his goodness. Let's talk of his faithfulness. Let's talk of his loving kindness. Let's just lift him up far above again this hour. Let's worship him. Somebody join me to 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 worship him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you. Hallelujah. Father, we adore you. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. I want you to take this prayer point 
decree and declare, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, those who you have sent into my life to help me accomplish my purpose, by faith, I connect with them. Say, friends, that you are sent into my life to help me to accomplish, oh, Lord, my purpose, I connect with them. I connect with them. I connect with them. I connect with them. I want you to begin to declare that, that Father, those who you have sent into my life to accomplish my, my purpose, Lord, I connect with them. Wherever they are, I connect with them. I connect with them. I connect with them. And they will connect with me. Oh, Lord, friends that you have sent my way, maybe I've ignored them. Maybe I've not noticed them. Friends that you have sent my way, as I've heard your word again, to accomplish my purpose in life. Say, by faith today, I connect with them. Show me, Lord. Open my eyes to see them. Open my eyes to see them. Open my eyes to see them. I want you to declare that. I want you to declare that. That Father, in the name of Jesus, there are people that, that you have sent to my life to befriend me. Oh Lord, to accomplish my purpose. Wherever they are, connect me with them. Connect me with them. In the east, in the west, in the north, in the south, wherever they are on this planet earth. Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. I want you to pray that prayer. 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 Lift up your voice and say, Father, there are people that you have sent my life to befriend me in order to help me accomplish my purpose. Connect, oh Lord, connect me with them. Connect them with me. Connect me with them. Connect me with them. I want you to begin to say that. I want you 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 to lift up your voice again. And I want you to say that, Father, from today, I will not fence out those that are meant to help me. I will not fence out my friend. You see, there are some people, you put up a black card. When people are sent certain people your way, maybe because they correct you, maybe because they rebook you, you want them to be patting you at the back hallway, and this friendship is not like that. I want you to cry out to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, I will not fence out. People that you are meant to befriend me, I will not fence them out of my life. I will not fence them out of my life. I, I will not fence them out of my life. Arrogance will not cause me to fence them out of my life. People that are meant to help me, people that are meant to help me, Lord God Almighty, I will not fence them out of my life. I will not fence them out of my life. I will not fence them out of my life. I will not fence them out of my life. I will not fence them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. In the name of Jesus, people that need to help me, people that need to connect with me, people that need to take me, oh Lord, and take me to that place that you have prepared for me. People that are, are meant to share those seats, that are meant to sit, Lord, connect me today. I want you to begin to talk to your father. I want you to talk to your father. As you are praying in your spirit, I want you to pray in your understanding. As you are praying for yourself, I want you to pray for your children. I want you to pray for your children that the Lord will connect them with friends that we hold them, with friends that we uphold them, with friends that we strengthen them, with friends that they will grow together, the friends that God has made to be in their life. I want you to begin to declare it. I want you 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 to declare it. Just go ahead and begin to say it. Lord, connect me by, by, by your power. Oh, Lord, that I will not face out. People that are meant to help me, I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. I will not face them out of my life. Go ahead and make that decree. 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 I want you to pray this prayer. I just took a nap. It's not two minutes I closed my eyes and I saw a lot of light. I want you to cry out to God this hour. Every spirit of Beelzebub said they will not have place in your life. They will not have place in your home. They will not have place in our ministry. Say, you spirit of Beelzebub, we curse you. We curse you and we release the fire of God into, into 
you. Now in the name of Jesus, we release the power of God upon you. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to rebuke the spirit of Beelzebub. Ah, the spirit of Beelzebub. There's no place for you. You can't feast in our life. You can't feast in our home. You can't feast in our ministry. Your spirit of Beelzebub, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The fire of God is against you. We destroy your gathering. We destroy your evil. We turn it upside down by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. I want you to go ahead and rebuke every spirit of Beelzebub. Say, I rebuke every spirit of Beelzebub. Nothing for you to feast on in my life. I want you to pray that way. Nothing for you to feast on in the life of my children. Nothing for you to feast on in my ministry. Nothing for you to feast on. 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 I want you to lift up your voice. Your spirit of Beelzebub. I come as a servant of the living God and I make a decree and I declare by the power in the name of Jesus. Nothing for you to feast on. Nothing for you to eat. Nothing for you to destroy. We come against you. Your scheme and your devices in the name of Jesus. We release the fire of God. We release the blood of Jesus. We thwart your work. We turn it to nothing. In the name of Jesus, we bind your spirit of Beelzebub. We bind your spirit of Beelzebub. We bind your demons of Beelzebub. In the name of Jesus. 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 I want you to lift up your voice and begin to declare, I will not be trapped by friends. I will not be trapped by friends. I will not be trapped by friends. I want you to go ahead and begin to declare that. My life will not be trapped by friends. My life will not be trapped by friends. My gift will not be trapped by friends. I want you to go ahead. 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 I want you to go ahead and begin to declare, I will not be trapped. 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 I want you to go ahead, begin to say it. I will not be trapped by friends, by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. My life will not be trapped in the name of Jesus. I will not fall into any trap set for me by any friends. I will not fall into any trap felt to set for me by any power of the gate of hell. I want you to declare that. I will not fall into any trap. 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 Thank you, Father. I want you to lift up your voice and declare that, Father, in the name of Jesus, choose people for me, choose friends for me that will lead me to joy, to peace, to everything that you want me to be in life. Choose friends for me that will become the link to my achievement, to my success, to my greatness, to my lifting. Lord, choose friends for me from today. Oh Lord, link me with people. I want you to begin to say it. Pray for your children. 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 I want you to lift up your voice and begin to declare every unprofitable friends in my life. Every unprofitable friends, unprofitable friends that have attached themselves, maybe to your children, maybe to your wife, maybe to your husband, I want you to begin to declare that today God will separate them. I said God will separate them. Every unprofitable friend in your life, every unprofitable friends in your life, ask God to separate you from them from today. Ask God to separate you from every unprofitable friend, from every unprofitable friend, from every unprofitable friend, from every unprofitable friend, from today, that there will be this connection between you and them from this minute, from this second, in the name of Jesus, they will go their way while you will go forward. They will go their way while you will go forward. They will go their way while you will go forward. They will go their way while you will go forward. I want you to decree and declare that God will give you a free friend of his own heart, a friend of his own heart, a friend of his own heart. I want you to begin to declare in this season of your life, God will give you 
a friend of your own heart. You will not you have of his own heart. You will not be alone. I said you will not be alone. I said you will not be alone. I said you will not be alone. As I'm speaking, I'm speaking to you, that sister. You remember some things that they have done for you. Friends have hurt you so many ways. And as I'm speaking, it's like ah, it's like something is coming up again, and you are remembering every activity that has happened between you and trust friends. This morning, the Lord is separating you. The Lord is giving you victory. The Lord is releasing the balm of Gilead for you to forgive yourself because the problem right now, you don't forgive yourself. This morning, I come as a servant of God and I release grace for you to forgive yourself. Yes, you have had so many disappointments in the ends of friends, but today, the Lord is ministering to you so you can get up again and you can go. It's time for you to forget your past so that you can enter into your future. It's time for you to, give it, to forgive yourself. It's time for you to rise up again and trust God that God is able. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are and say, Father, choose mentors for me. Lord, choose mentor for me. Choose mentor for me. Men, women, oh yeah, choose mentor for me. I need a mentor from today. I need a mentor that will be in my guide, that will be my friend. Yes, I know you have the Holy Spirit, but you also need a mentor. I want you to cry out to God. 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 Thank you, Father. I want you to take this prayer point. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring solution to long-term problem in my life. Bring solution. Bring solution. There are problems that are caused by friends in your life. And this has been there for a long time. But this is the time for you to cry out to God and say, Father, bring solution to those problems that friends have caused you. Say, Father, bring solution. Say, Father, bring solution. Say, Father, bring solution to the problems that friends have caused you. I want you to begin to cry out that God will give you solution. It's a God of 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 solution. Just go ahead and begin to ask God for solution for those issues in your life, for those problems in your life. I want you to lift up your voice and ask for solution right now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and ask for solution for those issues in your life, for those problems in your life. I want you to go ahead and press on for solution and press on for solution. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are hearing me from and I want you to pray every mother every father, every mother to be. I want you to decree, I want you to declare that Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not know the ending of my children. I have known their beginning. I will not know their ending. I will not know their ending. I will not know their ending. I have known their beginning. I want you to pray as a mom. I want you to pray as a father. I have known their beginning. Lord, I will not know the ending of my children. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to break a prayer. I will not know the ending of my children. I will not know the ending of my children. Hey, Baba, I cry out for each of my, my children. I will not know their ending. I have known their beginning. I will not know their ending. 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 I want you to pour out your heart and begin to pray for your children. I have known their beginning. My God, I have known the beginning of my children. Yes, I will not know their ending. I will not know their ending. The devil will not kill. The devil will not steal them. The devil will not destroy them. Oh Lord, I have known that. Lord, the beginning of my children. I will not know their ending. I will not know their ending. I want you to open up your heart and begin to talk to your father. I will not know their ending. Every one of my children, I will not know their ending. Their grandchildren, I want you to pray for them. I will not know their ending. No matter what the devil tries, Lord, it will fail. I want you to pray that way. I want you to pray that way. In the name of Jesus, I want you to open your water. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Mana to koli brogada bo shigandaga enegere bo shigali braga. I come as a servant of the living God. I join my faith with you today. The Lord will send you friends, friends that will be the one that will help you to succeed, friends that will guide you, friends that will lead you, friends that will encourage you, friends that will always be there for you. The Lord will send such people that are encouragers into your life, into your life, into your life, into your life. 
into your life. I pray for you today, from this hour, you will connect with such people. You will connect with such people. They will connect with you. Whatever is facing friends that are meant to help you out of your life, today we remove it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of Beelzebub that wants to feast in your home, in your life, in your career, in your health, in your ministry, in our ministry, we release the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We release the blood of Jesus. We cancel, we destroy, and we speak the spirit of Beelzebub will not be able to feast in our midst. We'll not be able to feast in our life. We'll not be able to feast in our marriage. We'll not be able to feast in our health. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you at this hour by the power in the name of Jesus. Every issue that a long time in your life, I command it to cease. 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 In the name of Jesus, every issue. In the mighty name of Jesus, man de geli bro gagarusha, in the geli bro gagarabosha, in the lavaso kali bro gagara, in the bro gahi kavasuka, man de li ando kalia, regeboshi galava, in the lebosha, in the lebosha, in the lebosha, ma karusi geli braga. I pray for you today. Ah, you have known the beginning of your children. You will not know their handed. 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 You will not know. I pray to death for you. Your children will not dry up. They will not dry up. They will not dry up. They will not dry up. The devil will not kill your children. The devil will not steal your children. The devil will not destroy your children. Every spirit of destruction we uncut with destroy. By the power in the blood of Jesus, we command you to rise up today. And deliver worship. I pray for you. By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Negama Sukali Brogagada. You will not fail. I said you will not fail. I said you will not fail. Hey, Karusi Galibraga. No matter how long you are hearing that word, that you are a failure. I come as a servant of the living God. You will not fail. In the name of Jesus, I pull you out of the stream of failure. I pull you out. I pull you out. I pull you out from the dungeon of failure. I pull you out from the root of failure. I pull your hands out by the power of the blood of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus. I declare under this authority that you will not fail. I said you will not fail. I said you will not fail. No matter how the devil will come in many ways, I stand in the place of authority. I speak over your life. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. In the name of Jesus, I push the enemy out of your zone. I push the enemy out of your coma. I push the enemy out of your health. I push the enemy out of your business. I push the enemy out of your career. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I speak over your life. You are standing up. 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 Whatever the devil have used to interpret your situation, we turn it out for your good. I turn it out for your good. Ah, yes, yes, I'm speaking to you. I turn it out for your good. 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 As we bruise the head of that problem. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. Arise and walk. Arise and enter into the will and the purpose of God. From today, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost, any friends that is not meant to be in your life, I separate you with them. You will not just say it with your mouth, but from today, you will separate with them. So shall it be. I bless your watcher in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I pray for you, you will do the will of God. You will walk in the ways of God and the ways of righteousness. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Without any doubt, I want to believe strongly that you are blessed. Also, I want to encourage you, our women conference, make sure you are part of it. Try as much as possible to be part of it. If you have not registered, either you are paid or you have not paid, please try and register. And as you do, 
the Lord is going to bless you. And if you need any details or any more information, can you please copy the number on the stream or send message to my me to my email and I'll be able to reply you. Again, I want to say a big thank you to those that have given and have also helped us to sponsor this conference. It shall be well with you all the days of your life. You will not lack good things. And those of you that have not given as well, it is well with you. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will cause you to have great bountiful habits in the name of Jesus. Let's quickly arrange our offering, our offering, our offering, our offering, our offering. Arrange your offering right now as you are hearing the sound of my voice. Let's arrange our offering. Let's put it together. Let's put it together. Let's put it together and give it again as a seed, as a child, as an offering. And as you are doing that, we have a details on the screen. Go ahead and do what you need to do, and it shall be well with you. Maybe you are hearing me for the first time. You have not given your life to Christ. This is an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. If we have such people on this platform, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you because I know you died for me on the cross of Calvary and you rose up again. I ask this hour that you will forgive me of all my sins and my transgression. I know you shed your blood for my sake. And right now, I ask that you will wipe off all my sins and my transgression by your blood in the name of Jesus. If you have said that, it's so simple. I want you to know that that makes you a born again Christian in the name of Jesus. You can worship with us this Sunday in Graceland, which is between the hours of eight and nine. Usually our services are from nine to 10, but because of our conference, our first service will be eight to nine. And we have another service by level. You can watch us on this on, on virtual. But on Sunday morning, I invite you to come to Graceland. And tomorrow, by the special grace of God, we'll be having a Bible study in the evening. In the morning, we'll be having in the present. Maybe you have just joined us for the first time. Every morning, we have a devotion chat, which is from the hour of 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. If you have not been joining, I want you to please do that. And the Lord will richly bless you until I come your way again. I want you to know that Jesus loves you and I love you. Keep enjoying the blessing and the goodness of God. No shaking. It is well with you.